other than that, I'm with Barbara. It'd be really fun to play a villain because pl- being a villain's fun. Like you can be a, just the worst person in the world on like in screen or playing that character, and then you can just go back to being a normal person. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'd really love to voice Tyrion Callas. Cause like, I don't know, there's something really fun about getting into a booth and just going wild. Like some of my favorite recording sessions were when Jean snapped to the end of volume three and uh, when Felix like flipped out on Locus in uh, the second episode of the Mercs arc. It's just kind of fun to get in and get like scary weird. And Tyrion Kyle is definitely scary weird. Uh, yeah, that's an awesome question. Thank you very much. You, you wanna choose one? Gun go up, I don't know if that could, would work. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here, here. We're gonna meet you halfway, and hopefully this won't. Nah. I'm just gonna say something that everyone's gonna hate here. Don't do that. Why the? Why would you do that? Don't do that. I'm warning you right now. This is your chance to not do that. Then I'm gonna say something to piss off my sister over there. <laughs> okay, that's right. David in the Virgin Killer sweater. Did you say David in the Virgin Killer sweater? It's just gonna be a twig with a Virgin Killer sweater hung off of it. The man. <laughs> She already hates you. <laughs> At least you're equipped to fight her. <laughs> uh, let's see, who else are we here? Do you, uh, oh. Oh, 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 yes. Um, as voice actors, you guys have obviously become attached to your characters. Who would we have to be your favorite character that you have voice acted and why? Who's our favorite character that we've ever voice acted? Ooh. Favorite character we've ever voice acted. Who's your favorite? Uh, oh, boy. Um, I do like David. David's the most exhausting, but he's also the guy that I strive to be, so David. Although Felix is also a real bastard, and that's fun. Um, uh, it's really hard to choose because there's great things about every character, and I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. Um, recently, though, like I've got to give it up for Space Kid. It's so fun. He's such a little cinnamon roll. He's just beautiful and innocent. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, every, every character's fun for different reasons. Obviously, Yang has, like, the most special place in my heart because that's how I got into voice acting in the first place, and I love voicing that character. Um, Neris is the most fun to do, though, just because I just love that character, and I love Camp Cam. Cosmos also, I did Cosmos and Fairy Tale, and that was a really cool experience to be at Funimation and to, to work with those pros, so that was really cool. There's a, a girl with a black shirt who someone is pointing at yeah. furiously. <laughs> hey, what's up, what's up? Oh. Oh. hey, what's up? How you doing? Oh, come close, come close. Watch the bow. Okay, this is for Barbara. Um, um, Aaron or Lindsay? <laughs> okay. That's the question? That's the question. Aaron or Lindsay? There's so many other what questions about, I have Kara? around that. <laughs> you All heard the them. question. Both of them for different purposes. I'm. S- that could be. Th- if you know what I'm saying. What's your favorite color? <laughs> favorite color. That's an easier one. Turquoise. Noise. Thank you for the question. Let's see. We haven't done a lot over here. Let's do. You, my darling. Hello. <laughs> my cousin wants to know if. John, Felix, and David were all trapped together in a room. What do you think would go down? Oh, God. If John, David, and Felix were trapped together in a room. All right. Who would eat who? <laughs> well, so I think, I think John and Felix would immediately team up on David. Because David would come and be like, okay, everyone, let's see if we can find a fantastic way to get out of this room. And John would be like, uh, yeah, dude. I- Take it down. You're at 11 right now, and I could really use you at like a two. And Felix would probably work to get Jean to work with him to get rid of David. And then once David was out of the way, Felix would try and kill Jean. And I honestly don't know how that would work out, but like, not everybody's leaving that room. Is I think how that would play out. Uh, let's see. Oh man, Babs, you haven't you haven't chosen anybody yet. You want to call someone out? Um, let's go, uh, right in the blue over there. Oh, yes. Water Tribe! Water Tribe's best. I said it. Water, waterbenders. You would be an Earthbender. Wait, show hands, like, real quick. Let me see show hands for Fire Nation. Earth. Air. Water. Damn right! All right. Oh, go dear, planet! Alright, I kind of lost my voice, so, um... 
Whatever happened to Socrates and Camp Camp? <laughs> Whatever happened to Socrates and Camp Camp? He was washed. He was washed. For those of you that don't know, Socrates was a really fun sock puppet that was used as a cock holster. And now you know. Now who are you now? <laughs> um, Blow my uh, mind, dude. Yeah, Socrates has seen some stuff. Purple guitar? That's is it guitar or ukulele? I don't know. Yeah. Ukulele. What's up, my dude? Okay, I'm very nervous asking this question. Hey, Miles, you want to sing a song with me? What song? Closing time? I'll give you the first one. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. I'll play it. Closing time. And we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Guys, that was beautiful. What's up, dude? What would each member of Team Ruby's favorite anime be? Oh, good question. Each Team Ruby's favorite I anime. I would say, only because it's my favorite anime, Attack on Titan. Hey! Attack on Titan. Hey. I think Yang would want to be a Titan, honestly. <laughs> I'm wondering if Yang's more of a JoJo person, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not like the uh, ten people were like, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Ruby would probably watch Lucky Star. <laughs> Someone said One Punch Man for Yang. Also, yeah. I could, I could see Blake being into Inuyasha. I could kind of see that, honestly. I could see Blake being into some hentai. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, aren't we all? Well, that. <laughs> um, Weiss. Hmm. Yeah, Weiss reads the manga. <laughs> Weiss, if she did watch anime too, she would totally be the person who's like, I only watch the sub, okay? I'm not a dub person, all right? Let's see how much time we got left. Oh, we got a few more. All right, Naruto, come on up. What's up, Leaf Village? How you doing? Oh, I oh, broke Miles. the table. It's glam. What's up? I'm actually Boruto's grandma. Kerry keeps doing this fun thing this weekend, by the way, where he refi anytime he sees a Naruto class player or like a, a poster for Naruto, he won't call it Naruto. He goes, oh, look, it's Baruto's dad. Because he's funny. Okay, so I have two questions because I'm not... Oh, you're giving off some crazy energy. I have two questions because I'm not sure if the first one really counts as a spoiler. It's not like a specific spoiler. I just kind of want to know, like, do you guys have like a general idea of how long you want Ruby to go on for? Like, wrap up in the next few seasons, wrap up in like 10 years? Yeah, we, we talked about this on, in an interview today, actually. Yeah, we said that in an interview. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of similar to Red vs. Blue, where we want to make it for as long as people want to watch it. I mean, to an extent, because you don't want to overdo it and, and make seasons for the sake of making it without having a story in mind. Um, but Carrie mentioned a number, yeah. he said, between 10 and 12 seasons. Yeah, when, when Monty... Yeah. When Monty, Carrie, and I sat down and kind of did the whole roadmap for the story, like it, we definitely, there's definitely an end to Team Ruby's journey. Uh, but Remnant's a big place, and you know, Legend of Korra was cool, so we can always maybe go back and revisit. Uh, what was your second question? Oh, I just wanted to ask, how have like your lives and like the company Rooster Teeth changed since making Ruby? Oh, Jesus, that's a good one. Thank you. Um, it's uh, it's very exciting. Uh, it's, uh, it's stressful sometimes, like when we started working on the show, like it was just a handful of nerds in like the garage part of the, of the office, and uh, we just thought it would be fun to make Ruby, and our, the bar that we set was, maybe some people will watch it and like it. And that was all we really wanted, and now it's this, which is unbelievable. Um, thank you, yeah. Um, so it's, it's obviously, it's incredibly fun, it's incredibly motivating, and it's, it's so nice. It's also really scary because when you sit down to work on the show now, like there's a lot riding on it um, for the company, for people personally who are invested in the show and the characters now, and it's you don't want to let people down. So it's 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 scary, but it's also incredibly sweet. Well, for a lot of us too, like this is a literal dream come true in the sense of like we're super hardcore nerds, so we used to come to conventions and meet people and like fangirl out, and we still do. Um, but now it's it's incredibly surreal and incredibly humbling to be on the opposite side uh, where you guys want to come see us? Like, that's insane. You're nuts. Um, and now we get to work with voice actors again that we've been fans with for, for forever. So we get to work with people like Travis Willingham and Laura Bailey and Yuri Lowenthal. Like, that's insane. It's, it's awesome. Um, I started off as a fan. I started off as a Rooster fan and I 
I watched Red vs. Blue, and I watched the RT shorts, and everything from the age of 14 until they hired me in 2011. And it's crazy to me that me, Lindsay, Miles, Carrie, Greg, Aaron, Kara, we're all here at this, at this convention with all of you guys representing Rooster Teeth. It's like, we've come so far where like the second generation of Rooster Teeth people are now representing the company. Bernie, Matt, Gus, like the guys who started the company are not here. And that's a, a totally normal thing. And it's like, there's so many different subsets of the company that people are fans of. And to see Ruby especially grow into an, its, its own and to have such a strong, intense, supportive fan base for the show is just like the most humbling experience. And to go from fan to being here on stage with all of you guys wanting to meet us and take pictures with us and, and have us write our names on your merchandise and your possessions. Um, it's like super, super humbling and surreal, and I can't get over it. Long yeah. story short, we love you. Yeah. A lot. Yes. All right, we got time for a few more questions. Yeah, I gotta hi. give it to the witch, because her cosplay is super cool. Left 4 Dead's like one of my favorite games ever. It's We're wild. also all signing at the booth throughout the rest of today and tomorrow. So if yeah. you do have a question and you didn't get it to us, we'll be there. Hi. Uh, first off, I just want to say I wear this costume to RTX every year. So next year, please look out for me. Yeah. Uh, as you can see from my... Don't startle the witch. Uh, my question is, out of every character you have voice acted, what has your, been your favorite line to deliver for just overall? And can you deliver it? Yeah. Um, and can we deliver it? My, mine's easy. It's um, uh, Camp Camp, season one, episode 12. It's um, because somebody fucking has to. Uh, when David finally swore, was like, because we, we were riding up to that moment from before the show was even a show. Like, we knew that was what we wanted the climax of season one to be. And I don't know, that moment meant a lot to me personally. I'm going to be a, a douche. I have two. Um, so the first one, as far as like a comedic value goes, I love uh, in Camp Camp when there's one opening where uh, somehow Space Kid got syrup in his butt, um, or the glue actually, and he's talking about the glue like running into his butt. He's like, "Oh guys, uh, the glue is going into my butt." It's like, it's "All right," um, but as far as like sentimental and really like a meaningful moment that I'll never forget, um, it was saying "I love you" to Yang at the end of Volume Three and having her not say it back. Yeah, I know, I'm Yang. Uh, I have a few. Um, so, for Red vs. Blue, it has to be Carrie, choking on my own spit. Um, and then for uh, X-Ray and Bav, when I did Orf, it was a... Uh, Hello, little human. What are you doing in the trash? Did your maker throw you away? Only because that was to Carrie's character, and Carrie's character was sh such a little shitbag that it's like the best thing ever. Um, it's still like beautiful to have this like innocent robot talking to this innocent little boy, yeah. and both of them not understanding what's happening. And he's like, "I'm not doing anything," and the Norm's like, "Okay," and then like flies away. Um, and then uh, mentioned it before, but Neris's line of uh, "Anyone else want a twenty slide of ass kicking?" That was really fun. And then for Ruby, it's just like. Gosh, every every scene is so much fun to do. I, for meaningful, I, the scene between Yang and Ruby in the end of Volume Three, it was uh, super challenging and super unique to be able to do that, especially yeah. with Lindsay. I remember watching it too, like just yeah. like a favorite line of yours that I enjoy. Um, in that scene, it really took like I had to take a second when a uh, Ruby's talking about Blake uh, and they're trying to figure out what happened with her, and she's like. There has to be a reason, and literally Yang cuts no, her off and goes, no, it doesn't. And I was like, oh, yeah. oh my and god. Sometimes <laughs> bad things just happen, which is true. And it's a, uh, I think that is such a turning point in the season, and the series, actually. So, Also, shout out to the uh, Summer Rose sitting in the front row. Oh, yeah. That's so cute. Goodness. You have a wonderful mother for doing that also. Oh, noted. Yeah. Noted. Good. <laughs> My parents dropped me off in front of the convention. They were like, hey, bye, loser. Have fun. <laughs> Taking it back to how this whole thing started and talking about fanning out over stuff. Travis McElroy came back and was apparently like right there trying to get my attention. I didn't notice and now I hate myself. Where'd he go? Did you he, has to, he had to run off to a panel. He had to run oh. off to a panel. Yeah. I'm going to plug 
go listen to my brother, my brother, and me in the Adventure Zone, because the McRoy brothers rule. Uh, Griffin McRoy, by the way, plays Jasper in Camp Camp, if you like that, so, yeah. All right, oh man, Ruby, you are so excited. I can't not, I'm so sorry. Ruby cosplayers always get the bias. Uh, you, you should come to expect this. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hi. I have oh, we have to come over here. That's a slippy carpet. I have a question. Is it true that Ruby likes Weiss or Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shippers start early. Uh, well, Ruby doesn't really know Oscar yet. Ruby doesn't know Oscar. What do you, what do you, you want it? Here you go. Well, listen, okay, Ruby loves Weiss, even though Weiss doesn't want to admit that she clearly loves her back in, like, a totally friend way. But, um, Ruby actually loves her weapon the most, so, uh, Ruby loves Crescent Rose. Duh. My precious. Thank you so much for the question. Let's see, we got, oh, I think this might be our last question. We'll I, be at the booth, don't worry. I gotta give it to Pira, and I'm so sorry, but, like, This is yeah. awesome. I love it. Yes. Come on, my dude. What's up? What's up? What's up? Make it a good one. Okay. So clearly, all your characters have inspiration to Ruby from backstories, more or less. Um, what are your favorite quirks that have been thrown in or called out to those original characters, or ones that maybe think fans haven't noticed? So to clarify, um, you're talking about how a lot of the characters in Ruby are based off of. Yeah. Okay. So characters in Ruby are based off of fairy tale characters, historical figures, stuff like that. And we do like shout outs to things like that. For example, Penny, who is based off Pinocchio, when she lies, rather than having her nose grow, she hiccups. So the question was, are there any other quirks like that that we really like or maybe people haven't really noticed wow, yet? That, you know, and that's, oh, that's a good happens. question. I remember um, it was like in volume one, uh, just after they like flew through the forest and landed to try to find their teammates, uh, Yang fights Ursus, the three bears. And yeah. I, I feel like that was just kind of like swept under there. Um, I don't know if it was intentional, but this is me interpreting it this way. Is I appreciated that Blake, who is inspired by Beauty and the Beast and the, the blending of the two, um, she reads. And, you know, maybe that's not in the original story, but in the Disney version, they make it very apparent that Belle is a huge fan of literature. So I was like, that's really cool. To uh, piggyback on that, we also made sure to give her a candelabra in that scene, uh, and we have her drink tea. Like, we try to surround Blake with um, the iconic items from the, the Beast Castle. Um, uh, the other thing that we had fun with, uh, Blake, Blake's one of my favorite characters, um, the whole Beauty and the Beast thing, um, like, you can kind of interpret it two different ways, and that she is Beauty and the Beast, or you could see uh, her as the Beauty and Adam Taurus as the Beast, and there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of, like, interpret that, and I don't know, I think that's sort of fun, there's not really one right answer, you know, it's whatever you want, but, I, yeah, Blake's fun. We need a guest on character. <laughs> oh, God. Well, actually, uh, there is. So, um, uh, no, 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 so in volume one, they talk about a general that uh, tried to, I, God, I can't remember the facts from my own damn show, um, that tried to attack the Faunus at night. He's named after Gaston. That, that general is named after Gaston that was going in to try and like kill the Faunus. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to kill the beasts. Does he use antlers in all of his decorating? You know he do. When he was a lad, did he eat four dozen eggs every morning to help him get large? It's like you know the man himself. <laughs> I do. Hey guys, thank you so much for hanging out here with us. This has been super fun. Uh, we're going to be doing, the, I don't know if we are, but like we have the stage here for obviously the rest of the convention. We're going to be doing signings uh, throughout the weekend. We're also going to be walking around. Please, by all means, always stop and say hi. Unless we're like running late to something, we love getting to talk and meet with you guys. Thank you so much. Um, have a great con. We love you. Mm. Oh yeah, we're almost there. <laughs>